you may have heard of hackers hiding files on computers and doing evil things with them. In this video, we're going to take a look at hidden files and directories in the Linux file system. We are going to take a look at what they are, how to find them, how to create them, and what they are really being used for. So the question is, what is a hidden file? Well, simply, it's just a file that you can't see unless you use some command line magic. So let's start by looking at the files that I have in my home folder. I'm just going to type in ls. And here we see a bunch of files here and everything looks normal. I have a couple of directories and a text file. But now if I use the magical dash a option with the ls command, then suddenly I see a whole bunch more files and directories. And these new files and directories all start with a dot in their names, right? So I see a folder named dot, a folder named dot dot, a folder named burp suite, a file named bash history, and so forth. And so basically a hidden file is just a file or directory that has a dot at the beginning of its name. And some people who speak proper English would say that it's called a period or full stop, but I'm just gonna call it a dot because it's easier. So one thing to keep in mind is that even though these files are hidden, they're usually not hidden because the user is doing something nefarious. All right, so don't get overly excited when you find these files just because someone has these on their machine. Most of the time these files are hidden because you as a regular user don't want or really need to see them. They are mostly configuration files or files that are used for some process that you really don't need to be concerned about. If you are a bad guy and really want to hide a file, you can just encrypt the file so that the contents are not readable by anyone without the password, and then rename it so that it doesn't attract any attention. If we look at the files here, we see that they're mostly configuration files for either specific tools like Burp Suite or Emacs, or else the shell environment, like this .profile and .bash history files, or else the GUI environment like the .config and the .kde. All right, so as I mentioned earlier in the video, the simplest way to see hidden files is by running ls-a. And you will notice the folders dot and dot dot in the folder that you are doing the ls-a listing. And they usually don't provide any interest, so I don't really want to see them. And so what we can do is use ls-a to suppress the listing of dot and dot dot. To go another step further to suppress the files that are visible normally that we don't care about, we can use a wildcard of dot star to just get the dot files. But make sure you also add the dash D option to ls, which will list the directories themselves and not the contents. Otherwise, you will see each directory listed and then its contents. So I'm going to do ls dash capital A and then D for directory only. And then dot star again. And now you can see that I am only looking at the hidden files and folders and not the regular files and folders. And we can go beyond just one directory and look for hidden files and directories in the entire file system using the find command. All right, so what I can do is do sudo find and then tell it where to look. So you know, normally you can just do slash by itself, but I'm gonna limit it down, otherwise it might take a while and find too many things. So I'm gonna do slash home slash root slash etsy slash temp that's probably enough and then what i'm looking for i'm looking for any files with a name that conform to dot and then i'm going to escape the star i'm going to go ahead and pipe that to more and now what we'll see after we give it the password because i'm doing sudo and the reason why i'm doing sudo is because otherwise i may not be able to access some of the photos like root and etsy and so forth all right, so what we see here is all the files for myself, right? The blue monkey under slash home. And then I see a bunch of files for the username user. If I continue looking down, so you can also see in the home folder for the root user, he's got a bunch of dot files in there. And then further down in the Etsy folder, we have various different tools that have hidden files or at least placeholders for some of these cron jobs. And then lastly, we have the temp folder, which has a bunch of dot folders as well. So how do you create a hidden file or directory? For files, you can just use anything that creates a file like vim or cat. 
you know, and then let's just give it a name. So I'm going to do cat and then redirect all of the input into a file called .secret underscore stuff. This new file that I'm creating is going to be a hidden file because we started it with the dot. And for the contents, I'm just going to type a bunch of stuff. Um, hello, this is my secret file. You can't see me. And then ending it there. All right, so that's it. We created the file that has a dot in front of the name, so it should be hidden. And so we can verify this by running the ls-a capital again. And sure enough, there is the file called dot secret stuff. Okay, so to create a hidden folder, you can use the make dir command for directories. And once again, you just do make dir and then give it a name that starts with a dot. And then that would basically automatically not be revealed by default. And we can do the ls-a again to make sure that folder has been created. And sure enough, there it is. And lastly, you can also just change an existing file or folder to a hidden file or folder by just simply renaming that file or folder, right? Using the mv command. So for example, I can rename the folder called videos to dot videos. I can rename the file called password list to dot password list dot text. And then when I do the ls dash capital A again, we can see that the folder videos is now a hidden folder. The file dot password dash list dot text is also a hidden file. If we do ls again, I only see these two folders. So creating a hidden file or folder is pretty straightforward. As I have mentioned earlier, the reason for hidden files is normally because certain programs will have configuration files or log files that they are reading or creating. These files are usually not needed by the users on a day-to-day -day basis, so they are hidden from normal view, so there's less clutter on the desktop or in the folders. So let's take a look at some of these examples which could provide invaluable information for those in the digital forensics and incident response professions. All right, the first thing we're going to look at is on this machine, which is running the Parrot OS. And once again, I'm going to do the ls-a capital to see what hidden files are in this particular home folder. And the first thing that we see that may be of interest is the .bash history file. And this file shows you all of the commands which were run by the user whose home folder this file is located in. Okay, so if I do more dot bash history, you can see that it's run a bunch of commands in the previous shells. Note that this file is only present when the user logs out of that terminal. So if you don't see it, it could be due to a bunch of different factors. The simplest explanation is that the user is not running the bash shell. Okay, yeah, they could be running a Z shell, in which case they wouldn't be saving the history in the bash history file. And you can see what shell they're running by just doing the echo dollar shell. All right, and this comes back and tells us we are running the bash shell. Another reason for why this file may not be populated is because that user hasn't exited a shell yet, right? The file is only written once the user exits a shell. And so we can see about shells by looking at the last log and literally we type the command last. Then we can see this user blue monkey is still logged in on a few terminals and then it had logged in and out of a few other terminals. So that explains why there is definitely content because when Blue Monkey logged out at these particular times here, whatever history that it was done on that shell got written to the .bash history file. And another reason why this file may not be populated is if the user turned off the history logging or zeroed out that file itself. And that's a much longer topic, so leave a comment below if you want to see more on that. All right, the next file of interest is the dot less history file. So let's take a look at that. 
This file basically contains any search terms that was used with the less command. Right, so when you're using less to look at a file and then you do some searches, those search terms are logged in this particular location. And also any shell commands that was run within the less command is also logged in here. So you can notice that there are uh, separate sections in this file, right? Uh, you have a section for the search terms, right? That starts with dot search. And then you also have these sections called dot shell, which is where different shells has executed a command within the less command. Another thing to note is that the man page command also uses the less command to paginate. So even though you have never used the less command, you may have search patterns that were logged in here from when you did it within a man page. Now let's take a look at the hidden files on the machine running the Kane operating system. I'm gonna run the ls command again to see only the hidden files and folders. But it looks like on this machine, we'll still see the dot and the dot dot folders, even though we use the dash capital A option. So basically on this command line interpreter, we need to specifically exclude the dot and the dot dot files by adding this construct. So I'm going to do ls dash capital A D of dot open bracket exclamation mark dot and exclamation mark star. So now we can see that the dot and the dot dot are no longer being shown. All right, so here we still see the dot bash history file as we did before. And then this time there is actually a bash RC file, which is used by every bash shell every time a new shell is started. All right, so I also see a dot Mozilla folder, which is where Firefox keeps its configuration and log files. So let's take a look in here. So I'm going to do ls capital R for recursive dot Mozilla and then pipe that into more because I know there's going to be a lot of files. And sure enough, here are all of the uh, Firefox related files, including the SQLite databases that have the cookies, the history, the bookmarks, etc. Okay, let's see what else we can see on this machine that is interesting. And I see that we have a .ssh folder, which contains the known host files. So if we take a look at the known host file, we can see that it contains the host keys for machines that this user has SSH into. And I'm going to blur that out for the protection of the innocent. And if we go and take a look again to see what other files there are, we see the .tmux configuration and .tmux underscore history file. All right, so these are from running the tmux sessions. So the .conf file contains configurations and key bindings. And then the history file contains the history for the tmux sessions. All right, and then lastly here, we see the .vim info file, which stores the command line history, search string history, etc. for the vim command. So as you can see here, uh, it can tell us when we last did a quit out of vim, and then last time we did a write out of vim. Uh, it also tells us the last search term, which is actually the literally the word history that I had searched for. And you notice there's a timestamp associated with each one of these events. And so what we can do is we can actually see what those timestamps are by running the date command with the dash D option. So we can tell here that the last time we quit out of VI without writing is February 16th at 4 p.m. GMT. And the last time we did a write from Vim was February 8th at 9.55 p.m. GMT. And then let's see, when did we do the uh, search history? That was done. on February 16th at 4.04 p.m. GMT. Now let's take a look at the hidden files on a machine running the Mac OS. In my home folder, I can see these files. 
All right, so these are all the hidden files. And a file that we didn't see before when we we're using the other machines is python underscore history. So let's take a look at that. And so not much of interest here because uh, I don't think I've done much with Python with this account. Let's take a look at another file, the uh, SQLite history file. And here we can definitely see the commands that were typed when I used SQLite 3 to manually look at a SQL database. Okay, so basically all the history for using SQLite 3 was kept in this particular file. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at what we have again instead of just the dot files. So now we have the Z shell files, which is of interest to you. Now let's take a look at the files related to the Z shell. The first file I'm going to look at is Z shell RC, which contains the configuration settings for Z shell. And in this case, looks like there's only one line where I customize the prompt to say Blue Monkey Forensics at MacBook Pro, right? But otherwise it would contain all of the settings and configurations that a normal bash file or a normal Z shell file would have. Let's take a look at this next item, which is the Z shell sessions. It's actually a folder. So we can see a bunch of different sessions and the files associated with them, which is a history file and then a session file. So if we look at a history file, so many commands that was typed in, right? And if we look at the session file, it actually tells us the date on when it was run. So we can actually copy and paste this. And we can see that that session was last ran on Friday, February 16th at 1158 Eastern time. And of course, here is the history file, which contains all the commands that were run in this particular session. So there you have it, folks. You should now be able to create and identify hidden files in Linux. We've seen that these hidden files are used as configuration files, web browser data, log and cache files for certain applications. Hackers will sometimes create hidden files and folders to obfuscate their activities. The clever ones will try to use existing names that look similar to legit hidden files. They can create a .kde-x11 folder to blend in with the .kde folder. But keep in mind that the bulk of what you see as hidden files are benign, so you need to be familiar with your system to notice the files and folders which were created for evil purposes like KDE X11 in this example. For more videos about Linux, make sure you watch these videos here. Make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe so I can pass on the good karma. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.